Today, most scientists would agree. Most, but not all. A growing number of scientists who call themselves creationists interpret these strata very differently. They believe the world and man were created about 10,000 years ago, and most of these rock layers were deposited during Noah's flood. It's hard to imagine a more controversial split today in the ranks of science. At the Institute for Creation Research in San Diego, scientists are gathering to coordinate and publish their interpretation of origins. The Creation Research Society now claims 700 PhDs and Masters of Science. John Morris is one of their experts in geology. I feel that humans lived throughout the entire geologic column and that the geologic column could very well have been, and in fact I, I feel was, laid down by by a single major hydraulic catastrophe. Dr. Morris was principal investigator on one of the most amazing bits of creationist evidence ever found, the footprints in the Paluxy River in Texas. It was about the turn of the century, 1908, something like that, when there was a major flood on the Paluxy River. And the people then began to see markings in the, in the rock that they had never seen before. And, and didn't understand. They were these huge prints of, of these bird-like creatures with three toes, things of this nature, and soon people figured out they were dinosaur footprints, and it was an amazing find. Discovery of the dinosaur prints attracted many scientists to this rural area. Some of the huge tracks were removed to various universities, and some were sold on the black market. Today, the area is incorporated into Dinosaur State Park to protect the remaining tracks. The giant reptile prints are fascinating, but other nearby tracks are more difficult to explain. Creationists claim they are human footprints in the same Cretaceous layer, placed at the same time as the dinosaur prints. Yet the theory of evolution insists humans and dinosaurs never coexisted. This, I think, is one of the main evidences for the revision of the geologic column. To find humans and dinosaurs together is totally incompatible with our modern-day concepts of, of evolution and uniformitarianism. Then, evidence came to light that some of the prints may have been fakes. A team of creationists excavated, attempting to answer once and for all the charges of a hoax. Throughout the 60s and around 68 to 71 or so, there was a whole lot of activity at the Paluxy River to uncover new prints, go back into the river, to uh, turn over new rock shells where the river has not been before, where there's no chance of carving. These prints are inside, uh, you know, in place, and there's no chance that they were carved. These are prints as they were laid down in the original mud, which they later turned to limestone. Six new trails were exposed startling evidence for the creationist claim. The Bible tells explicitly the creation of the world, not in four billion years, but in six days. For creationists, there is only one origin of the species, divine creation. Animals were made in their own kind, and Adam was fashioned from dirt in the image of God. For evolutionists, blind chance changed simians into sapiens. Dr. Duane Gish, a biochemist, has written that man did not evolve, that fossils such as Neanderthal and Lucy are misinterpretations of deformed humans or extinct apes. I believe that these creatures, such as the Australopithecines, were apes not intermediate, and they were certainly not men. The primates make up one of the 32 orders of mammals, and as George Gaylord Simpson, one of the world's leading evolutionists, has stated, every one of these 32 orders of mammals have appeared with their distinct ordinal characteristics already complete. In other words, from the very start, when the first time you see a bat, it's a bat. A whale is a whale, a primate is a primate, and a hoofed animal is a hoofed animal. And there are no transitional forms, no intermediate going back to their supposed uh, uh, ancestral order. 
The Paluxy prints are one of many claims which have fired a recent scientific controversy. A controversy which is often very heated. Well, I think that the only place that we have definitive evidence for humans and dinosaurs existing together is in cartoons. And essentially what we're looking at probably is somebody's attempt to pull a joke on scientists. Science, by their definition, is the attempt to explain everything without a supernatural. Now to me that is, uh, that is incompatible with, with science as it calls itself a search for truth because if there is truth outside the naturalistic scheme of things, then any attempt to explain things without a supernatural element is doomed to failure. And I feel that much of evolution scientist, science is, is doomed to failure because of that very assumption. It may be that those human footprints that are there, I've not seen them, were simply carved in the same rock levels in which you found dinosaur footprints. Right. These have never been published in the scientific literature, and science, scientists have never been invited to critically examine the footprints now, we until welcome, that happens. We would welcome an opportunity to, to go and look at these footprints and to uh, investigate them personally. Most of the journals that publish scientific literature are committed to an evolutionary position, an evolutionary framework. And articles that would be um, antagonistic toward that viewpoint would be, um, would seldom be approved for publication. On many occasions, creationists have written to uh, journals to, uh, to publish articles or even letter to, letters to the editor, that sort of thing, and, and very, very seldom are, are they published. There's a sense that people say there's this discontinuity between the family of man and the family of apes, but if we look at extant forms, living forms today, and we study the anatomy, we study the biochemistry, we study the blood, we study the actual DNA sequences, we find out that there is a lot of overlap between apes and humans, and obviously somewhere in the past they shared a common ancestor. Now the similarities in the proteins, of course, are not startling. We would predict that on the basis of creation, because we are living in the same world, we are drinking the same water, eating the same food, breathing the same air, we have exactly the same metabolic problems. We believe God, the Creator, then having solved these problems, would have essentially used the same solution in each case. But the distinguishing features between man and chimpanzees are really startling. Of course, he has a brain about one-third of ours, and, and the many other characteristics of chimpanzee are tremendously different than man. He has no ability to speak, he does not think abstractly, he does not think into the future, he does not think about the past. Very, very different from man. He is indeed an animal. We are human. Okay, one of the things that modern creationists are trying to do is to masquerade under a banner called scientific creationism and act as though they are actually scientists working within the scientific forum. This is not true. In fact, what these people have are a set of beliefs usually based on the chapter of Genesis in the Bible and instead of testing their propositions and trying to answer questions they already have the answers and they're not asking any questions there's no way that we can construct testable scientific theories about origins evolution is no more scientific than creation and it's certainly as religious it is a basic dogma of humanism atheism agnostic Gnosticism and things of that nature. The debate has moved from the laboratory to the classroom to the courtroom. It was once thought settled. It probably never will be. Lower third. Those scientists who espouse evolution and those who believe in creation will probably never close the gap. Hopefully, they can agree on one point. Science needs healthy skepticism. And we shouldn't forget the famous Nebraska man based upon a single tooth found in western Nebraska in 1922. Some of the world's greatest authorities were very excited by this discovery and uh, they were convinced it was part of a primitive uh, subhuman ancestor of man. And the Illustrated London News uh, had their artist draw a picture of this creature. It turned out to be very manlike showed a picture of the man, and his wife, and the tools that they were using based upon this single tooth. However, a few years later, they discovered the skeleton of this creature, the remainder of the skeleton, and it turned out to be neither a man-like ape nor an ape-like man. It turned out to be a pig. Now, this, again, the startling thing is that uh, great authorities had mistaken a pig's tooth for an evolutionary form of man. 
Now, they were honest scientists. They were very good scientists and very careful scientists. What had happened? You see, this is what they had wanted to find, this is what they had expected to find, and therefore this is what they tended to see. The search for the missing links of our origin will continue. Perhaps we really hope to find our destiny.